Good afternoon, everyone, or morning, if you're joining us from a later time zone. Thank you for attending our webinar on digital signage and education, led by Alan and Jonathan Braun of Braun Consulting and sponsored by Samsung. My name is Heather Wagaman. I'm the marketing manager. I've been with IAVI for just under two years. Many of you are IAVI customers already, but for those of you who might not know us, I want to quickly touch on our company and why it's so easy to do business with IAVI. We've been distributing Pro-AV supplies since 1997, and our sales team has just under 200 combined years of experience in the field of Pro-AV sales, with multiple industry certifications in offices across the country. We carry and stock your favorite brands, and every member of the sales team is required to attend regular factory-led trainings on the latest products and programs by our manufacturer partners. Our sales reps have expertise in specking complete solutions in multiple vertical markets, and no project is too large or small. This is just a small sample of the various solutions we've helped our customers to create. We're proud to serve as a one-stop shop for hardware and accessories, and our experienced logistics team can offer same-day nationwide shipping for just-in-time delivery on projects that are time sensitive, allowing us to become an extension of your warehousing abilities. Don't forget to take advantage of the registration expert at our bid desk who can save you valuable time and profit by registering every aspect of your projects for you. We also make sure we keep you updated on the manufacturer's most current SPIFs and rebate programs. Lastly, before we start the featured presentation, Take a moment to look at what some of our customers have said over the past year about their experience in doing business with IAVI and our employees. The earlier slides gave you the facts, but our customers' words are the most powerful tool we have to show you how serious we are about the relationships we build and nurture every day with you. Thank you again for attending our webinar. Alan and Jonathan, the floor is yours. Please take it away. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Uh, while Jonathan is switching over presenters, uh, you'll know, first of all hear from me. My name is Alan Braun, and my partner, and as many of you know, my son, uh, and I might add parenthetically, my best friend, uh, Jonathan, will take over uh, the latter half of the presentation. Uh, I guess, Jonathan, we now know who we can get to uh, record our commercials. Heather just did an outstanding job. That's got to be say so. Absolutely, got to be the nicest introduction that I've heard in a long time. Um, this presentation today is actually near and dear to our hearts. Uh, as, as some of you know, um, I've been around this uh, game for over three and a half decades, and, and uh, I started out as a teacher. And so the whole educational element in selling to the education community and education in general uh, is just really near and dear to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, I write numerous white papers every year on the topic of of education, digital signage and education, uh, how we can invigorate uh, our educational institutions with our new technologies. And so Jonathan and I created this called uh, this program called Digital Signage and More, a Tool in Education. So we're going to start this out with just a quick market overview uh, showing you just what the market growth is in digital signage. We're not going to spend a lot of time in numbers and things because I don't think that's relevant. But what I do think is relevant is that you understand that digital signage is an overall market is growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, in 2013, uh, IMS said that we grew at about 20%. There's some people think it was as low as 17%, and some people pontificate and say, oh, man, it was 27%. Look, I'm not good in math, and I don't think Jonathan is either, but the fact of the matter is the United States economy grew at about 2.5% last year. And if this thing is growing somewhere in the 17 to 24 percent range, we can recognize that digital signage is a market that we really want to be uh, we want to be involved in. And when we look at the market, there's this this recognition that it's it's become a valuable tool not just for advertising and retailing, which is obviously the kind of the common thought about digital signage, but it's for employee facing networks. And yes, we can utilize it in education. Now, Frost and Sullivan, one of the leading research companies around, they define digital signage as a network of displays that can be remotely managed and whose business model revolves around merchandising, advertising, entertainment, corporate, or educational communication. Now, the interesting part about this quote is this quote's about six years old. 
So they recognized back then they were kind of like the, uh, the harbinger of things to come, that this was going to be important in corporate communication and educational communication. They knew that it was not just going to reside in the retail community. As a matter of fact, the most recent surveys show that in terms of actual growth, now these are not numbers, this is percentage of growth. If we talk about actual numbers, the retail segment and the quick serve rest, uh, restaurant segment is still the largest in terms of just numbers of dollars spent on digital signage. But in terms of percentage of growth, in 2014, corporate is going to be number one, followed number two by education. Now that's pretty doggone significant to say the very least. So these are kind of opportunities that we want to embrace and we want to consider as we move forward. The problem with digital signage, and Jonathan and I have been dealing with this, and, and Heather and the team at IABI know exactly what I'm talking about, and this is one of the things that we teach in our digital signage experts group courses, is that the concept of the tangled web, that it looks so doggone simple on the surface, it really does. But the truth of the matter is that all of these disparate parts actually act together in unison. Kind of a classic AV integration scenario, if, if you will. And what all of this integration of these disparate parts means is that it, it really poses a, a challenge, probably the best way to put it, to the designers, installers, and content creators, and all of those kinds of folks. And and the, the, the kind of begs the question of getting a full immersion and understanding of how all of this stuff fits together relating to the needs of your client, most especially in education, as I think we're going to show in this seminar. A lot of integration companies, and, and, and God bless us, we, you know, having been there, like I said, for three and a half decades, and Jonathan's been at it for about 20 years, uh, the truth of the matter is that, that we've been slow to, in, in, to kind of uh, uh, integrate our own thinking, uh, do our own paradigm shifts uh, in the AV and IT worlds. And a lot of integration companies have part of the solutions in mind, but most people don't have the entire picture in mind. And so Jonathan and I, uh, over a, a, a very good bottle of wine one night, uh, I cleaned that up, by the way, didn't I, Jonathan? Um, over a very good bottle of wine one night, Jonathan and I created uh, what we what we think is probably one of the most important slides that you'll run into in a long time. Uh, it's called the seven key elements. And this is important in the sense that it literally encapsulates all of digital signage, or as the printing industry calls it, dynamic digital signage. It incorporates everything that we run into, and each of these seven elements is, is, is involved in each and every digital signage application that you come across, whether it's uh, you know, a one, one digital sign display in uh, Harriet's Hair Salon in East Buggy Whip, Nebraska, or it's 5,600 signs in Bank of America, or it's the entire University of Illinois campus or University of Texas campus with literally hundreds if not thousands of displays the one thing that all of those have in common are these seven key elements. And they start with the most complex and they go to the uh, least complex. And I won't say least important because only we're dealing with complexity. Uh, you look over at the far right hand side of your screen, it says operations, and, and, and that's the least, uh, the least complex issue. And all of my friends in the integration industry begin to get all nervous and go, well, wait a minute, it's difficult to install. Well, no, there aren't a lot of variables and in installations. Uh, as most of you who are integration people know, uh, you know, wall studs, whether they're metal or whether they're wood, they're on 16-inch centers, and we know what a concrete floor looks like, and we know what a suspended ceiling looks like. And these things are not easy by any means, but what these things are are things that are defined. We already know what they are. But we start with the most difficult parts of the seven key elements, which is business. And, and the critical thing about the business decisions is that you've got to figure out what you want the digital signage system to do. And it's it's, it's true as much in education, if not more so, than in any other uh, niche in digital signage. What do you want it to do? Do you want it to build a brand? Do you want it to communicate? Do you want it to wayfind? Uh, do you want it to give additional information? Do you have a call to action? These are all the objectives that, that you have to think about in terms of digital signage. Then the next most complex is content. The old phrase, content is king, is true. But content really isn't the king. Really, the business and the objectives are king. I'll let content be the crown prince in our vernacular. But content is that material on, that you show on screen 
that lets you realize the objectives that you stated in your in your business plan. So as you're meeting with school systems, or if you're not even in education, you're dealing with, with uh, end users, you want to make sure that they establish their objectives. And one of your goals, by the way, is to help them do that. And then the content has to help them meet those objectives. Then we get into uh, we get into a situation uh, with design. Okay, where's the screen going to go? How big is the screen going to be? How many screens we're going to have, and all of that. And of course, that's very important. But again, not as critical as the business part and content. Then software. That's the backbone. And one of the things Jonathan's going to talk about in a few minutes is how really cool software for uh, for what we call generically smart schools. Uh, we're going to use uh, Samsung School as an example. But, but smart school kind of is the, the generic, kind of like a smart phone if you, uh, if you want to draw that analogy. But software is what makes it all hang together. It manages it, it schedules it, it distributes it. And then hardware. Now, my friends at Samsung and probably my friends at IABI don't like my saying this, but everybody makes good displays today. Everybody makes good hardware. Everybody makes good cables and good connectors. When I was a kid in this business, uh, um, and, and believe it or not, I was a kid at one time in this business, the truth of the matter is we had good, better, best, and we had some awful products, and then we had a few that were really, really good. Today we get really, really, really great flat panel displays, great projectors, great uh, products of all types. So hardware is, is, is complex only in the fact that we have such a variety to choose from. Then we go to connectivity, wired, wireless, cellular. In other words, does it hook up and does it work? Now that's one of the least complex issues because, frankly, does it work, does it hook up, or does it not? The safest, obviously, being wired. Uh, the, the, the most complex probably is cellular with potential cellular dropouts. But, but, the, but one of the least complex elements, but still one of those seven key elements. And then, of course, operations, which is installation and maintenance. So that, in a nutshell, kind of, for those of you who are not familiar with digital signage, and those of you who are DSCE certified, you, you've been inundated with this graphic uh, time and time again. But under that umbrella is everything in general, from a category point of view, that you need to know moving forward. Now we're going to take a look at what we taught, you know, kind of do the bridge into, uh, into the whole educational community. We've talked a little bit about digital signage. We've got a, a we call it the new economy, and, and boy, if, if, if that's not true, uh, the only constant is change. We preach that all the time, and our economic woes are just, uh, you know, they, they, you know, we still have a stagnant middle class. We still have the upper echelon growing like, uh, you know, by leaps and bounds. We still have unemployment rates that are too high, and so, um, so the the truth of the matter is that that we have to take a look at at economies of scale and how we spend our time, and making sure that we as integrators, we as AV and digital signage. Uh, people as educational people, we have to use our time in the most efficient and effective way uh, possible. And nowhere is this more true than in the education market. Uh, conventional wisdom states that you know basically uh, this whole education thing is simple, right? We just slap a flat panel in, on a reception desk, uh, you know, at, at the reception desk of a school or maybe at a cafeteria or something like that, and everybody is fat, dumb, and happy. Well, not so fast. We have a lot to tell you about this. In fact, modern AV and IT systems and digital signage uh, design and integration projects are anything but simple and anything but just slapping a flat panel in at the reception desk. In the old days, and of course, as Jonathan will tell you, at my age, I always have to bring up the old days. Uh, we we had we had, actually it's true we had uh, black chalkboards. Uh, they migrated then to green chalkboards, then to white chalkboards. Uh, we had film strip projectors, and then we had the clackety clack of 16 millimeter projectors. Uh, and of course, now we uh, we have been into the age of you know magic markers and maybe a video projector and maybe a computer lab. And you know we talk about this as, as, as progress with a small p. But the the fact of the matter is that we've really done a complete leap forward in the last five years uh, from a technology point of view and how we're going to incorporate that uh, into our classroom environments. And, and this is also germane, by the way, for corporate America. You talk about the question as to whether all of this technology push is, is necessary. And, and I, I not only say yes, but heck yes. Uh, again, I cleaned that up for the crowd, but it's absolutely true. 
forget putting on the red, white, and blue for a minute and, and waving the flag, which, which I'm certainly proud to be an American, but let's face facts. If you take a look at our assimilation and retention rates of our students, you take a look at our high school dropouts, you take a look at the kids who are doing less well in the school, and then you take a look at, at the people in the world who are the best at math, at science, at civics, education in general, we're beginning to lag behind. We are not number one in all of those categories. Yet, by the way, we are number one in the best universities, the best higher educational systems in the entire world. Our problem is K through 12. Our problem is in preschool. Our problem is in this educational area. And so we've got to bridge this ed education gap. Uh, we have some advantages in the United States right now. I'll, I'll play Reverend Al just for a minute. We, we now have the energy thanks to natural gas, thanks to, the, to, to oil shale, thanks to a whole bunch of things. We actually are going to be energy independent within the next five years. If, if you had told me that five years ago, I would have said you're smoking funny cigarettes. So we've got this economic thing kind of under control. We're bringing manufacturing back to our country. What we do not, ladies and gentlemen, have under control is taking care of our educational systems in our country, and politicians are, uh, just give lip service to it. You know, the old joke about a salesman, the only time you know when they're telling a lie is when they're moving their lips. Well, that's not true about salespeople, but it probably is true about most politicians. The truth of the matter is they use education as a whipping boy to say, we need to do more for our educational institutions, and almost none of them ever do anything. I'll take the collar back off, and I'll let Jonathan change the slides. So digital signage. It's a return on investment and a return on objectives in education. Now, when you think about a return on investment, you think about, okay, I spent hard dollars and I get hard dollars return. Well, that's not exactly the way it works in education, but it kind of does in one way. Most educational institutions get funding based on uh, days attended in class and the, and the reading levels and the math levels and the science levels of their students. So if you trace this all back and you go into different school systems around the country, you'll see that there is, in fact, a return on investment. So if you invest in the, the proper technologies and electronic whiteboards and projectors and flat panel displays and tablets and computers and all of this sort of thing, if you invest in those things, data has shown conclusively that your uh, graduation rates are going to improve, your assimilation and retention rates are going to improve, uh, having large class sizes is not going to be as onerous as it was before, uh, and so you are going to actually get a return on investment, but you also get return on objectives. Return on objectives are, well, we want to communicate with our kids better. We want to communicate to our kids the way that they're used to being communicated with. We may want to make collaboration a reality, and so those are some of the objectives that we have in digital signage, and we are going to be able to get a return on those objectives uh, uh, as well as return on investment. You can read the whole list from emergency systems, campus TV networks, breakout rooms, mobile connectivity. That's just a, an almost endless list, but I want you to start thinking outside the box. Think of ways that you can use a smartphone, a tablet, a flat panel display. I want you to start thinking about those things in, in, in kind of a, as, as Kim Sarubi, who's the chairman of the Digital Signage Federation, says, she says, think outside the rectangle. So I want you to kind of challenge you to do that. Now, as we take a look at digital signage applications in education, research has shown this, that students do better if we teach them in a manner consistent with the way they're used to communicating at home. Now, when Jonathan was a kid, um, he, got, he, got his first, he got his first computer, by the way. It was an old Radio Shack TRS-80. Uh, that's a true story. But when he was a kid, there was no such thing as a tablet. There was no such thing as a laptop. There was no such thing as the Internet. And he's 33 years old. So you can imagine how backward it all was when I was a kid. But I challenge you today, look at how many kids have cell phones, smartphones, tablets, laptops, etc. The vast majority of the people that we come into contact with now, all of a sudden, if that's what you use in your daily life, then all of a sudden you go to school and you're being taught on a, a, a green board or maybe an updated whiteboard with magic markers, you can kind of see you've got a huge disconnect in the way people are used to learning and the way we're teaching our students. 
Now, digital signage applications in education. We can obviously promote campus, campus events. That's not a, a brain surgery. Uh, dissemination of current information. And of course, your CMS program, your content management system, gives you the opportunity to, to do things like policies and procedures and, 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 and different events that are going on in the school and all of that sort of thing. Those are a couple of things. Uh, broadcast emergency alerts, of course, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm always sad when I when I bring up this slide because it, it's necessary. We've had such horrible events, but let's think in the not quite so horrible like school closings because of uh, uh, inclement weather and things like that. And, and let's think on a slightly more positive basis. But these have become mandated, uh, you know, federally mandated that there be emergency alert uh, systems with instructions and all of that sort of thing. Uh, additional revenue through advertising. There are some school systems, by the way, that actually allow. There are some that don't, but there are some that actually allow additional advertising of local vendors and things like that, and that helps, uh, you know, a revenue offset uh, to the to the actual cost of, of a digital signage system in school systems. So that's something you're going to have to investigate on a on a, on a basis uh, on an individual basis. Control and distribution of policies and procedures we mentioned before with information, but this can become very important in terms of like rules and regulations that are like, like for example, if you might have a dress code or there might be uh, um, a, a special uh, day of testing or whatever the policies and procedures are, uh, again, a more convenient way to do those things. And of course, mobile applications to teach. This is one that I'm going to leave this alone right now because Jonathan's going to talk about that a lot more in a couple of minutes. But just consider mobile applications. This is kind of the wave of the future with tablets, with smartphones, and things like that. And of course, my own personal favorite, I leave this nearly to last on my part of the presentation, improving instructional effort. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that if you have more than 15 students in a classroom, uh, it, it's like a hockey stick going down, uh, assimilation and retention rates, education rates, but more than 15 students. Now, again, going back to our famous politicians who love to tell us what they think we want to hear and not necessarily the truth, the fact of the matter is, is they're bragging about, oh, we're going to lower class sizes. The truth be told, they're not going to lower class sizes. We're still going to have 30 and sometimes 40 kids in a class. So how do you make all of this work? Well. In my, in my mind, teachers have to become teachers and managers. And Jonathan's going to illustrate this when we talk about the whole smart schools concept. And again, we're going to use Samsung, Samsung School as, a, uh, as, as, as an example of this. And by the way, uh, when, he, when he's talking about this, uh, because he's got quite a bit of information, uh, the Memphis school system and, and several school systems around the country have already adopted this. And so when you see what this is all about, you're going to understand clearly how we can improve instructional effort. Now, having been a teacher, uh, being an ex-college professor, and having been a, a kind of an industrial teacher over the last 33 years, I can tell you that a lot of people don't take kindly to, uh, you know, to uh, technical advances. So sometimes teaching uh, teachers how to use the technology can be very challenging. Uh, I'm told by those who deal with the medical profession that the only thing worse than teaching a teacher sometimes is teaching a doctor how to use technology. So uh, all uh, doctor and teacher jokes aside, uh, sometimes the technology is a little intimidating to them. So kind of keep that in the back of your minds. But understand, we're going to improve instructional effort, no doubt about it. The bottom line of all of this is that, that, that we are inundated with screens. About eight hours of every day, we're in front of a screen, believe it or not. And 67 to 70% of the population sees digital signage of one type or another every single solitary day. And, and one of my, my own personal quotes that I developed a number of years ago is when application technology and price converge, an opportunity exists. In the day and age when I used to head up the commercial display group at Samsung back in the early 2000s, in those early days, we were selling a 40-inch flat panel for $4,000. Yes, for those of you who haven't been around that long, it was $4,000. And it was a plasma display, by the way, back then, and not an LCD display. So imagine now, with the uh, dropping of uh, uh, flat panel prices, the improvement in CMSs and technology in general, imagine the opportunities that are in front of us. So I'm going to stop uh, my diatribe, and I'm going to turn it over to my trusty partner, Jonathan, and he's going to talk about interactive smart schools and that whole concept. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, 
now that we've, we've kind of gotten a feel for how digital signage can work in education as a whole, I want to talk about a little more specific extension of that. Now, before I go into this, I know a bunch of people are going to be saying, wait a minute, this isn't traditional digital signage. True, it's not. This is an extension of those kinds of technologies that are being used for digital signage and some of the same concepts, but applied in a different way to help improve instruction inside our schools in a meaningful manner. So we're going to take all this fancy technology that we've had for some time now, and we're going to expand it. We're going to move it into the classroom, and we're going to utilize it in a really powerful way. This is kind of the, the, the new smart school, as was already mentioned. Just like we have smart phones and we have smart TVs, we're not going to have smart schools. But instead of just being able to stream Netflix on our school, see, yes, I made a smart TV joke. Come on, I, I, a bunch of AV people on a webinar, everybody's got to, at least got a chuckle out of that. If you didn't, just at least have the courtesy to not tell me. So we're going to take these technologies and we're going to use them to enhance how we actually can teach, and really in a meaningful way. So what I want to do is talk about one product that you can actually use today. It's called Samsung School. And this is something that Samsung has produced, bringing together all of their various technologies that they manufacture, flat panels, tablets, PCs, printers, to bring together into a single coherent system, but to use it in a way that's, well, not quite digital signage, I still think you'll see the connection. And this is really about what I'm going to call School 2.0. Also, there's been a movement uh, talking about Aristotle 2.0. If you look at YouTube and the whole press right now to, to change the way that we teach in a really fundamental way. You know, schools are really about preparing students to become productive members of society in the future. And we're starting to change how we view schools because it's becoming more about a quality educational experience and really having a skilled teaching staff who can manage. I really like that teacher manager uh, comment to help students reach their full potential and manage the schools in an efficient and cost-effective manner. And so as our needs for education have evolved, we've evolved new tools. And we've seen things like there's actually some phenomenal YouTube courses where you can go and watch in 10, 15-minute chunks incredible information one of my personal favorites is a group called Crash Course, which does stuff on chemistry and U.S. history, world history. Uh, they're doing a new one on psychology, and you can get enormous amounts of information and education, but then these little bite-sized chunks that make it real easy to digest. Khan Academy. Yeah, exactly. Khan Academy is a great example of a commercial version of that. We've seen a lot more educational software. Think about it. Today, we see more people trying to learn languages using Rosetta Stone than you're going to see using traditional tapes or books. Uh, we've moved to the age of digital books. I mean, how many of us have e-book readers? And we use those instead of the actual paper books. Uh, I was kind of sad a few months ago. I actually got rid of and I donated out all of my paper books because I didn't have room to keep them anymore. And I've got all of them on my tablet at this point. So. It's amazing what we can do. And then we've got all these new custom applications that we have on our smartphones, on our tablets, or on our PCs that really have, have become available that let us do these things. And also, now that we have the Internet <coughs> connecting everything, and no, I'm not going to do the Internet of Things pitch, but the reality is we're all connected together in a global society among each other way more than we've ever been before, where everybody carries the Internet in their pocket, on a smartphone, we've got so many people with tablets. We've got uh, go, go take a look at, at, at photos of college classrooms today when the students are actually in there, and look at the sea of laptops. Well, okay, you're going to see a whole lot of lit Apple logos, but you know the reality is everybody's got a laptop, everybody's using it, everybody's got tablets and they're using them, everybody's got smartphones and they're using them, especially as we move beyond K through 12. But even there. I mean, how many kids today have something like a Kindle because it's incredibly inexpensive as a tablet? Think about utilizing these tools. So we've got to come up with new methods to share information. And it's really about the fact that now that everything's connected, we've got to come up with ways to communicate with the kids in a way they understand and appreciate. Okay, when we're growing up now with the YouTube generation moving through the educational process, 
they're not used to the same kind of things that I am from an educational standpoint because they live their lives differently than I did when I was their age. And the same thing for my father here. And that wasn't an age joke. Thank you very much. But the reality is that we have to evolve and teach people in the way that which they're used to teaching. And so now we're exploring new ways to use all these tools inside the classroom. If we think about it, most schools today are expected to have the internet in the classroom generally either having Wi-Fi or sometimes even wired connections. Uh, I know that uh, my high school, before I graduated, we won a digital high school grant and had a few million dollars that was earmarked specifically for networking the entire campus. Well, when I talked to my little brother who's 14 about that, he's kind of shocked that there was an era when we weren't completely networked on a school campus and had the internet in every room. And he was actually surprised to learn that, yes, back then I sat at a desk, didn't have a computer on it, and I still used textbooks. But that's a great piece of evidence for where we're going from where it was really an isolated learning environment where I'm kind of working on my own. And yes, we had group projects and things, but we're all listening to the lecture and then working independently to now we're dealing with a collaborative learning center. Ooh, I like that phrase. I'm going to borrow that. Um, and this internet access and digital content development and new learning management solutions is really changing communication between students and teachers. And so as all of these things start to really materialize, people have the demand, manufacturers and solutions providers are finally kind of seeing that it exists. And that's where we're seeing development of products to address this, not taking solutions that were built for the, the boardroom and trying to move it over, although that works in some classroom environments. But if we talk about where we need the most help, K through 12, it doesn't. Uh, and then we're starting to see that the government is starting to get the importance of adapting to the changing needs of our students. And we're starting to see more grant programs freeing up to buy technology and put technology in the schools. And that's phenomenal because let me, let, me, let me interject that uh, I just uh, heard a news report yesterday that Obama just signed um, uh, signed um, uh, 200,000 uh, more students are going to be, they've got a project right now for the federal government, 200,000 more students are going to have uh, internet connectivity uh, in the next six months. And so that's one example of what you're talking about. Exactly. And this is not just us, by the way. This is actually a global initiative where people around the world are starting to understand that just as these technologies can, notice I don't always say will, but they can make our lives fundamentally better at home and at work, they can do the same at the school level. So we're seeing this, and we're seeing things like really strong pushes towards building digital textbooks. And we're seeing more of the big textbook producers like McGraw-Hill get into this and build this digital curriculum material that works on e-book readers and tablets that reduces costs for college students, but also means it reduces costs for all schools on producing and building and, and buying these coursework. So that's important. So this is all about really fundamental improvements. So I want to show you some of the really interesting electronic classroom tools we have at our disposal now, because this is really going to improve learning engagement, as you already heard my father speak about, but also give us true classroom management in a meaningful way. And what this is going to do, and this is a real study. You can actually check this out in Samsung's brochures that they put out about their Samsung school product. But this, this pyramid you're seeing here in retention rates, this is actually common wisdom in the educational industry, where we're boosting student retention rates by providing an interactive environment where they actively can participate in the lesson. And think about that. You know, when I was a kid and I was in elementary school, I sat there and I listened to the teacher and I kept dozing off. I was getting good grades, so I never really got in trouble, but it was boring as heck because I'm listening to a lecture. Producing interactivity is going to actively engage the mind in a meaningful way. And so when students become more engaged in that subject matter using hands-on experience and collaboration, they're going to retain that information better. Just look here. This shows us retention rates, and it's a reverse pyramid. When you're just listening to a lecture, you're talking about 5%. When you just read it, 10%. When you watch it with an audiovisual presentation, it's 20%. When you see a demonstration, it's 30%. Group discussion increases it to 40 Actually practicing it by doing it is 50 And when you actually use it immediately and teach others how to do it, it goes up to 60% retention. 
So the more interactivity and the more active and participatory we make people in education, the better their retention of that information is. And this is so incredibly true. So let's take an actual look at Samsung School and how this can change how we look at education. Because this does allow teachers to provide personalized, targeted, focused attention. Well, think about it. That's an extension of the philosophy we use in digital signage. Targeted communications are more effective. Well, that's true in the classroom as well. So this is a really impressive new way to provide a set of tools to motivate students to learn, increase collaboration, increase enthusiasm, increase participation. Okay, because we have this technology. Now what you're going to see here is a total education solution produced by Samsung utilizing their LFDs, their Galaxy Note tablets, and it can even incorporate their printers. Although we all want to be green, and even though the printer guys don't want me to say this, you know, we're in a digital age, we don't necessarily need to print out everything today. But they do make some awesome printers. I'll try and save it that way. Yeah, we'll go with that. So this is going to be a really interesting solution. What does it really do? So before I show you the hardware and the layout, the main features of this is to provide interactive teaching, in-class interaction with screen sharing, monitoring, student device control. That's one that's always a big concern, and I can't wait to share that with everyone, and a number of other functions, and really increase in classroom engagement because we're putting the technology right in the hands of the students. So you look, the kids with the tablets look really happy. Let's go with that. Come on, guys. This is also going to give us true class management as more students are put into a classroom. And let's face it, that's not really going to change. Okay, public schools are only going to grow in size. We're not going to stop producing new children. Let's be honest about that. So that's only going to grow more and more. So we're going to have larger class sizes. We have to find ways to work within that boundary to understand that we've got to give teachers better tools to manage those classes so they can still deliver the attention kids need, period. So that means we need to have tools to provide course administration, content management, uh, communication with them. And then also, this can incorporate digital whiteboard technology, what Samsung's been calling eboards, and a network in each room. And this is going to contain then a central server at the school that stores all the course content and user or student information. And the teachers can either use tablets like the Galaxy Notes, or a PC, which is going to get mirrored to that digital whiteboard, where they can share their screen with the students and produce that information, show it, but also be able to edit it and manipulate it and do things in real time. Uh, one of the things that Samsung demonstrates frequently is they can build all of this out of basically a group of Galaxy Note 10.1 tablets with a all -share cast dongle and an LFD, let's say something like an ME55C, where we can now create a complete system. And it's not all that expensive to utilize, but it provides real serious results. It looks like this, where we do have that central server, you can see, and that provides course administration, management, uh, user management, and then the communications to all of the students, which can be working individually or in groups. And we've got the ability with the teacher equipped with a tablet and a PC uh, the, the, the information can be mirrored up onto a large screen, uh, like a digital whiteboard, or taking notes right on that screen, or just a, a plain flat panel display, and the teacher can work off their tablet. One of the things that I actually like, uh, when I initially looked at this, uh, I, I kind of said, well, wait a minute, the digital whiteboard has got to be more popular, because, you know, boy, I'm taking notes on it, and I'm just I'm thinking in that blackboard paradigm. But consider, as, as a presenter, I never like to turn my back on my audience. So why should the students be any different? And now I find I present very frequently from my tablet facing the audience at all times. I have all my notes there. I can see the screen. Same thing as having a confidence monitor at the base of the stage that you use or a teleprompter, right? Well, think about it. This, the teacher can utilize the tablet to stay facing the class, make all their notes, share their content and screens, manage the students' displays right there in their hands, and they never have to take their attention off of the class to turn around to write stuff on the board. I think that's pretty nifty. And this is all based around the ability to share screens, not just from one tablet to a screen, but among tablets and among multiple screens. So when we take, and we're going to use the Galaxy Note 10.1 tablets as an example, 
Although it's compatible with all of Samsung's most recent tablets, the Notes, uh, the Tab 3s, etc. But what we can do is we can display content not only up on that large screen, but through the, the school software, we can also put it on every student's tablet. So now we've got the ability to share that information among everyone in the classroom, large view, view right on your desk, teachers got the content in their hands, they can make annotations directly on it, they can authorize a student to make annotations directly on it. So I could give permission for little Timmy to solve the math problem that I put up on the screen, they don't have to get up in front of the class, it helps with people who do suffer from stage fright and things like that, you can think about it. Uh, not that I would have any point of reference to that at this point, I would think, but hey, you get the idea. And so it's really in encouraging student engagement by making them interact with that content. And also we can distribute files through the learning management system or the classroom management system so that not only can we show this information, but we can pass that information during the, the class to the students, to specific students or groups, so they've got that information it has got some stickiness to it, not just what they saw in class or what notes they took, but content can be pushed down to them so that they can carry it with them. One of the big concerns that everyone always has with things like these kinds of smart school concepts is, well, you know what, if the kids all have tablets, they're going to be playing Angry Birds and checking Facebook. Well, of course, that is a concern. But what you can see here is Samsung thought of this and incorporated screen monitoring so that the teacher can view what every student is doing at a moment's notice, see exactly what they're doing, then if they're behind, they can direct specific attention to that student so they can help them catch up. Or if they're doing something that they're not supposed to, we can utilize control functions to push that back and get them back on track. So very, very, very powerful set of features in that regard. This also incorporates the ability to use uh, actual asset management system. There's some digital asset management softwares that schools want to use on their laptops and tablets that the school owns that are issued to students to make sure they're not used inappropriately, and Samsung Solution incorporates with those as well. And it gives them the complete control over the student's device. So if, for instance, you really want to make sure they're paying attention, you can lock all the devices and do the attention please you see there on your screen. You can redirect the student's attention that way. You can block interactions on the tablet, so maybe they can only see the current screen and can't change anything. So not only can we monitor it, we can manage it. And we can also do things like there's an app whitelist function. So you can say that during the school session, you could only allow these certain apps. So you may have to allow them to launch, say, a, a specific textbook app, or you want them to be able to launch a web browser to do research or something similar, but you don't want them playing Angry Birds or checking Facebook. You can whitelist the apps they're allowed to use. Also, you can shut down or turn on the student's devices. So you've got very detailed control over everything there with the tablets. Also, uh, remote content sharing. The teachers can push content to a student's tablet uh, with a specific timer so they can time activities or exams or things. So this remote content sharing, I can send a website to the students and give them a little bit of time to look at it or other specific apps so I could open you know, whatever I need to and say, okay, you've got this much time to look at it and that kind of thing. You know, here's a calculator, here's, you know, you've got two minutes to solve this problem, that kind of thing. Now, of course, any system would really be remiss if it didn't address quizzing and exams and polls and things. And so Samsung has built into their learning management system or classroom management system here the ability to, from a bunch of different quiz and poll templates, build interactive quizzes and things for the students. And these can be conducted live or they can be scheduled at a specific time. You can actually save multiple quizzes to an overall storage called a quiz bank. Uh, you can actually automatically have the system grade these quizzes, which saves, things, saves a lot of time on the teacher's part because this is all digital. And you can track progress because it gives real detailed feedback in real time of how a student's doing so you can help tweak the learning plan for a specific student. And because we have so much control over the content and the ability to develop re very rich, detailed curriculums, we can target additional information to students that need more help on specific topics. And of course, I personally always hated 
group collaboration when I was in school because we'd all sit around a desk and everybody had to pull their chair over. And I'd always get stuck with the lazy people who never seemed to want to actually do anything. So I'd end up doing all the work and then you know we'd all get good grades and I would sit and mutter under my breath about how I hated those people. Uh, that kind of thing. That, that, that's gone today because we've got better tools for collaboration where not only can everybody work together in an easier fashion and you're not having to necessarily rely on little Timmy to go off on his own and make sure he does his research, but you can monitor and check and see what's going on both from the teacher and within the group level. And so this allows for uh, content to be sent to students, to be sent to a group of students. They can split the screen up into different zones so they can all work on different aspects. They can combine things back together. The group leader has the ability to pull things together from different people. They can uh, submit assignments to the teacher. They can also assign presenters to take the content that the students produce and navigate it and present it through the screen sharing. So this helps make the group collaboration a little less onerous, especially for those of us who didn't really like group projects back in the day. And of course, the system incorporates all kinds of different content capabilities where we can view a PowerPoint, Word, Excel, PDF, images, web pages, and it automatically resizes and rotates the content to fit, which is really going to be important because no instructor is going to want to take the time to do that during the course where all of a sudden, oh, well, you know, here's my PowerPoint, but, oh, it's not formatted for your screen right. Dude, forget that. The fact that we have the ability to do this and the teacher can push this information out to the students I think is a great feature. Now, one of the things, and I'm sorry, I'm going to just pause for a second. Yes, it's just going to kind of sound like a Samsung commercial, but I think it's important. One of the challenges that we have with, with tablets in general is handwriting. Okay, I'm not very fast at typing on an on-screen keyboard. Yes, there are accessory keyboards you can get that will help you, and of course, I'm sure many of us own those, and you know, you can type, for, that's fine. But let's think about, from a fundamental standpoint, the best way that many of us take notes is to write it. Well, on a tablet, that's usually pretty challenging because when you put your hand on the screen so you can write like you would on a piece of paper, it recognizes your hand and you end up with all kinds of different uh, marks and things that you didn't anticipate. Now, yes, they do make capacitive styli for all kinds of different devices, and Samsung uses them for their uh, Galaxy tabs, which don't have the uh, Galaxy Note or no pros distinctive stylus, but that stylus, uh, because the, the capacitive ones don't really, I mean, they're, they're just basically using the same trick that your finger does to, to work with the capacitive touch screen. So it doesn't really provide the advantages. The notes incorporate that S10 stylus, which uses a, a digitizer technology like from Wacom, so that you can actually write on these. And one of the things they did really well, I'm, I'm very happy with my new, I got a Note 2014, uh, the Note 10.1 2014. And I love it because there's just a little button. You can turn hand, uh, hand recognition off or on. And you can even automate it based on whether you pulled the pen out. And it makes it much easier to take notes. I don't carry a paper notepad anymore. I just use my tablet. And so the fact that I can take and write those notes uh, using the S Note app, which the Galaxy Note phones and the, and the Note tablets have, uh, very, very cool. And also the fact that you know teachers can handwrite and annotate. You're not stuck with just typing. Uh, you can do annotations to notes and assignments. Everything gets mirrored up on the screen. You can do drawings. Uh, there are certainly math equations that are not very easy to put up with a keyboard, or if you want to do some, those kinds of things, uh, doing music annotation, try doing that with a regular keyboard. So this gives us a really cool capability that is unique to Samsung. So any commercial, but I had to present it. Now, the final set of, of things I want to mention, so much of this I think sounds really good, but then it comes down to, well, wait a minute, I've got to manage all this stuff as an instructor. That can get pretty nasty. I've got to plan out all these lessons, and oh, man, and that, you, you might think that's not going to encourage its use. In fact, if you go and look at the studies from the Memphis School District that they did over on Samsung.com, you'll actually see that the teachers took to this almost as quickly as the students did because the tools are there to make it easier to manage the courses. So there's a full course administration system where the school can build out semesters, schedules, courses, classes, do modification, assignments. Everything is scheduled. Now think about that. That's kind of an extension of digital signage again. The concept of day parting, targeting, and scheduling, that kind of thing is all there so that you can really make it easy to manage the student's learning. 
And also there's a complete content management library, not again unlike a digital science solution, where everything has to be uploaded, not only the, the overall content the school is authorized and purchased, but maybe personal content that each teacher has uploaded. And then public content is going to be made available for the students at any time, so they can download content. And also then, of course, we've got the quiz system where all that is stored centrally. User management, we, we have to be able to take, if we're going to tout the advantages of targeted learning, where we're really pushing that information to specific students and making sure they understand what's going on and adapting and, and adjusting to those students, we have to be able to look at each individual student as a user. And we have to have a central management system that allows them to, the teachers, to track the progress and profile of each student so you can see what's going on, how they're doing with assignments, what grades they're earning. And that is a really powerful system that we've got to have that's included here. And all, pardon me, and also communication. We want to have really good communication between students and teachers, not necessarily when the students are just sitting in the class, but at other times. So the system incorporates text messaging, uh, course bulletin boards, uh, overall announcement features. So you can ask questions of, the, stu of the, the, the teacher using the text messaging. You can comment and discuss on the class, on the course bulletin board. You can see the school announcements that, that come up. So schools can push out that information. And this overall gives us an incredibly powerful set of features that if you just think about what this can mean when deployed, we need to keep the kids engaged. And to do that, because of how much they're using these technologies and how plugged in they are to the internet era and things like YouTube and emailing and texting and using Facebook, we've got to take advantage of that mentality to communicate with them in a much more targeted fashion. It fits the way that they live their daily lives. And taking these these kinds of features and this kind of technology, putting it into the classroom, and utilizing that in that meaningful way, you can't help but see how that's going to impact learning overall. So with that, we'd love to take questions from everyone. You do have a question feature in the lower right of your screen, unless you happen to move it, in which case I can't tell you where you put it, but you should have some idea of where on your screen it sits. If you want to go ahead and throw any questions into the chat, I'll be happy to answer them for you. And uh, otherwise, I'm going to give you our contact information. If you have any questions about any of the material that you saw here today, digital science and education in general, Samsung School in specific, or any of Samsung's products, we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, don't ever be shy about emailing us. There you go, right there up on the screen. We're happy to help you out. All right, so if anyone has any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. Heather, we'll turn it back over to you and let you um, give any closing uh, comments as we're waiting to see if anybody has any uh, uh, questions they have. Okay, thanks guys for taking the time to educate our customers. I hope everyone learned something new. Um, we're happy at IAVI to help with any projects within or outside of the education vertical. Give us a call, 888-999-6564. If you don't already have a dedicated sales rep, we're happy to help you. Um, have a great 2014. Look forward to lots more training opportunities, other surprises coming out of IAVI this year. Uh, and thanks again for attending. Did anyone have any questions? Well, seeing none, I think uh, we'll call that a day. Thanks again, everybody. We appreciate you being here on behalf of Ron Consulting and Samsung. And of course, you've already heard that Heather's glad you were here. So uh, thanks again for attending. And uh, if you need anything, any of us can help you out, you know where to reach us. Thanks, guys, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.